Okay. Uh, so, dear brothers, uh, we thank the Lord for giving uh, it another opportunity to discuss his wonderful words of life. <clears throat> so, last uh, few weeks, uh, we studied about uh, the Trinity. We came to know that, that the word Trinity is not there in the Bible. It is not even mentioned in the Bible. And the concept of Trinity also is not there in the Bible at all. <clears throat> so, we have clearly come to know the understanding about the difference between uh, our Lord uh, Jesus Christ and uh, our uh, Heavenly Father. So both uh, <coughs> persons are not uh, one and the same, but uh, there are uh, two altogether uh, separate uh, persons. So today we are going to see, we are going to study about uh, our God. So dear brother, if you see <coughs> the study about our God, generally if we uh, ask uh, this question or if you, uh, you see, put forth this word about God, generally the concept among Christians is that uh, so God is very angry. <clears throat> you see, he's very, uh, uh, you see, uh, very anger person and uh, <clears throat> he's full of, uh, you see, uh, wrath uh, and uh, he never forgives anybody and he's very strict uh, and, uh, <clears throat> you see, uh, even for small, small mistakes, uh, you see, he punishes uh, everybody. So, this is the general idea about uh, God. <clears throat> How do they see? If you commit any sin, immediately God will punish us severely. So, Jesus uh, was totally opposite to this character. You see, Jesus, when he came to this earth, he loved everybody, he loved the sinners, he sacrificed his life, uh, you see, for the sinners. And uh, he pacified the anger of God. He took away all the anger of God. God poured out all his anger upon Jesus. And so Jesus had to die on the cross. So that difference, you see, uh, can be really noted among the Christians that Jesus was loving and God is a very <clears throat> strict uh, person. Hence, if you see, once uh, in a school, a teacher asked uh, students, uh, uh, what is the first thing uh, you're going to uh, do when you go to heaven, uh, uh, you see, and see God? What is the first thing you're going to do? <clears throat> this was a question put forth uh, to the students. Uh, and everybody replied the different, different things. And one child told, Madam, as soon as I go to heaven and if I see God, <clears throat> immediately I'll go and hide behind uh, Jesus. Then teacher told, why, what happened? Why you want to hide behind Jesus? God is there now. You can, you see, hug him. He told, no, 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 no. God is very <clears throat> huh? full of wrath, uh, full of anger. He's very strict, uh, you see. And uh, he doesn't uh, stand any sinners. <coughs> so as soon as uh, he sees me, <clears throat> you see, uh, he will punish me. <clears throat> yes, uh, he put me to hell, fire. So I'll hide behind Jesus. Uh, and this is the general, uh, you see, a reaction of uh, uh, many people uh, because of their uh, lack of understanding, uh, you see, from the Bible, dear brethren. Therefore, <coughs> if we study the Bible, <coughs> we come to know that, uh, you see, <coughs> God uh, is uh, all uh, loving and uh, all powerful and ever merciful that he could not, uh, you see, violate uh, his own scale of justice. Uh, he was bound by his uh, justice so much uh, that uh, he could not violate uh, his scale of justice. Hence, uh, it was God's love that gave his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross. <clears throat> you see, therefore, if you read in the Bible <clears throat> about God, the Bible says, the justice and judgment and the habitation of thy throne, mercy and truth shall go for before thy face. That means God's throne, you see, it is based upon justice and judgment. God could never, you see, violate justice and express his love. Once justice was satisfied, immediately God, what did he do? He showed his love, he showed his mercy by giving his son as a sacrifice for everybody. Therefore, if you see, imagine if a child is not feeling well in the house, eh? and if he's suffering uh, with a very critical illness, uh, who is the one who is going to suffer the most? Uh, if you say, it is the parents, uh, because they can't see this child 
suffering in front of them. They will sacrifice everything uh, na, to save them. This is the same condition <clears throat> that was there before God. And yet, uh, you see, dear brethren, uh, God was so loving that uh, he chose all the sinners uh, instead of Christ. He gave Christ to purchase all the sinners. Uh, imagine, <clears throat> you see, Pilate, uh, when he uh, put uh, Jesus before everybody, you see, along with him, he made uh, Barabbas uh, also to stand next to Jesus. And he told the people, whom do you want to choose? And uh, all the people choose Barabbas uh, instead of Christ. This was the love of God. He was ready to sacrifice his only son. And therefore, in the Bible, <clears throat> Jesus is called as the right hand of God. You see, let us read, you see, uh, Isaiah 53, uh, 51, 5, brother. Uh, Muslim, brother, can you read Isaiah 51, 5? Okay, brother. My righteousness is near my salvation, is gone forth, and mine arm shall judge the people. The, is, the isless shall wait upon me, and on my arm shall they trust. Uh, on my arm shall they trust. You see, my righteousness is near. My salvation is gone forth. My right hand, you see, uh, my harm, they shall wait upon my harm. Again, if you read in Isaiah 53, 1, it says, uh, to unto whom the harm of the Lord is revealed. Isaiah 51 it speaks about Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in the Bible is compared to the right hand of God. <clears throat> Why right hand? Because right hand always signifies the chief favor. A very, very important, uh, you see, place. Uh, therefore, if uh, somebody is very close to us, what is the term we use? He is my right hand. <clears throat> you see? He is my chief. Dear brethren, therefore, any blessings uh, when uh, somebody has to give, they will usually use their right hand. Uh, you see? And uh, to shake or greet anybody, uh, what is the, which is the hand that we use? Uh, we use the right hand. Uh, even though he might be a left-handed person, again, they use the right hand. So, all the blessings uh, of God was through Christ. Uh, hence, we read in the Bible, uh, the whole world, you see, was created by, you see, uh, God through Jesus. For Jesus, by Jesus, uh, you see, and for and uh, uh, through him. Dear brother. So, all the creation which God ever created was done for his son and through him. <clears throat> Therefore, there are many ways, uh, you see, to study about God like, for example, <clears throat> if we can study about the nature, in that nature, we can understand God. So today, we're going to compare some things about the nature and see whether those things are coinciding with the Bible. See, brethren, the first of all, the creation of God, the beautiful, uh, you see, uh, the things which God has created, the beautiful mountains, uh, the beautiful trees, uh, you see, the pleasant flowers, uh, and uh, take the water itself. The water itself is so wonderfully created. It doesn't have any color. It doesn't have any odor. It doesn't have any smell. It doesn't have any taste. But yet, uh, water is a very, very important commodity which we use every day. And this water is there in three forms. Solid, <clears throat> liquid, and gas. Have you ever wondered why God has made this uh, three different uh, forms that water can exist. Even then, this is a lot of reason uh, behind this one. Because uh, the water is in a solid state, it controls the environment. Uh, you see, it controls the temperature. You see, and uh, it doesn't make uh, all the, you see, uh, water from the mountains to flow inside the city and cause flood. And uh, uh, the clouds, uh, the gaseous form of water that controls uh, the temperature of this, uh, you see, uh, earth uh, and uh, globe itself. Uh, uh, just imagine if there is a cloud, uh, there is a cool temperature. It's like almost staying in a freezer. Uh, you see, the controlled environment is there. And the liquid, the liquid form of water. Uh, imagine uh, if God would have uh, given the liquid uh, any color, what would have happened? You see, today we have so many components uh, 
<clears throat> manufacturing or so many of cool drinks and variety variety of drinks from the water you see if god would have created a water a orange a light orange what would happen immediately fanta company would have come and put a patent saying this is my water if it would have been a brown color water you know what would have happened immediately coca cola company or pepsi company would have come god uh, knew that uh, all these things would happen therefore god created in a neutral way without any taste <clears throat> without any you see huh? without any color need but yet uh, it is so important that for each and everything we use water take for example you wake up early in the morning you brush teeth what do you want water we don't use any medicine to wash our mouth even after using the medicine also in case if it is there again we'll go to water in the great operation theater after doing all the operation what is the thing the doctor uses the master to wash each and every equipment to wash his hands legs everything they use again water to sterilize each and every equipment used in the operation what is that they use do they use detol no they use water that is the speciality about water they use used for washing clothes or washing utensils you see take bath put it for plants you see whatever you think yeah? you use water only though there are many liquids which are much more expensive than water still man uses water the water is so you see pleasant and so refreshing that in hot summer after drinking a cool drink again we desire to have little bit of at least little bit of water that is the greatness of our god no why god created all these things for mankind <clears throat> see the vegetables see the beautiful and the wonderful fruits each and every fruit each and every vegetable has its own unique character and various types of proteins vitamins carbohydrates each and everything has its own uniqueness see the color so wonderful to see see the taste isn't it huh? as soon as we see some delicious food what will happen immediately water comes out from our mouth you see dear brother this is the creation of god huh? and uh, the various plants uh, trees uh, huh? all these things which god has created not one tree is similar to another you see each and every category of tree has its own uniqueness just see the petals in it huh? of the beautiful flowers it is so soft and see the fragrance what do we put for this uh, plants we put some uh, dung some uh, fertilizers and put some waste water what in that waste water what comes a fragrance who can imitate this fragrance in any laboratory dear brethren dear brethren this is the creation of god you see and moreover the wonderful universe uh, a mighty universe itself uh, is a great uh, you see example of a god's greatness about his justice about his love huh? about his wisdom and about his power you see we know about our solar system in our solar system there are actually nine planets you see and uh, the nearest uh, uh, star uh, for our solar system is called as alpha century you see the alpha century is very near to earth now how much near you might be wondering if we travel at the speed of light we can reach the alpha century in just a short span of four and a half uh, lakh light years imagine you then four and a half uh, light years uh, what do you mean by light years you imagine light travels at the speed of 1 lakh 86000 miles per second if we keep on traveling at the same speed for four and a half years we will be reaching our nearest uh, uh, you see alpha century is the near start to the earth seems but uh, <clears throat> just imagine if we lift up our eyes and see what are there there are lot of lot of lot of stars are there the bible says uh, you see god has named each and every star it seems and each and every star moves in its own orbit it seems uh, it never deviates let us read the from in isaiah 40 26 brother most of the can you read isaiah 40 26 <clears throat> lift up your eyes on high and behold 
who had created these things that breathed out their host by number, he called them by all them by all names by the greatness of his might of that he is strong in power, not one failed. See, not one faileth. He called them all by names. He calls each and every star by names which himself. Dear brethren, you know how many stars are there? The scientist says the space is infinite. You can't count. Them. There are billion, billion, trillion, trillions of stars which himself. It can't be counted. But yet, God says he has named everybody and not one faileth is himself. Every star moves in his proper orbit. You see, recently we have seen eh, uh, <clears throat> airplane crash in Nepal. The world's dangerous airport is in Nepal. Huh? Just imagine the condition. Huh? Just imagine the condition of this uh, uh, universe. Huh? Have you ever heard any news saying, oh, today this star collided with the star. There's a great uh, a crash in the universe. No. Man, even after having sophisticated equipments, all the modern technology, you see, still crashes happen. But imagine huh? how many planes are there in this world. Huh? Not uh, countless. Not billions, trillions. More, might be lakhs or somewhere. But uh, God controls this universe. You see, how many <clears throat> huh? billions and billions of stars? Job says, you see, huh? he binds the influence of it. Read with Job 38, verse 31 and 32. Job 38, chapter, verse 31 and 32, brother. Huh? Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pelides? Or lose the band of Orin. Oh. Can't, oh. can't the bring from Mazurut in his season? Or can't the guide Actorus with his son? Okay. Can't the guide? These are the name of the constellations, sir. You see? Pleiades, huh? Orion, Actorus, the very largest sun in the universe is called as Arcturus, sir. He's God pushed the questions to Job. Can you guide it uh, in its path? So oh, great uh, is our God. <clears throat> you see, uh, therefore, you know, the space uh, is termed as uh, infinite. Uh, have you ever wondered how come the universe, the outer, uh, you see, the universe uh, is called as space? Generally, what do we call space as? You see, uh, you see, something uh, which there is a vacant, uh, uh, you see, that is called as space. Like, for example, if you, if you take uh, you see, uh, there is a beginning and an end. Okay. In between, if there is something gap between the two things, you see, in between uh, two things, uh, if there is a gap, see, you can see my hand. Between the two hands, there is a gap that is called a space. Now, why do they call it a space? Because <clears throat> scientists say this space is infinite. That means there is no end in space. How do we know? How do we know that there is no end in space, sir? Okay, you see, just keep on watching this video. You can see the different, different uh, uh, planets in our solar system. And not only one, you can see the various suns of this uh, you see, universe itself. Imagine in the night, if you come to our house, immediately we'll put on light in the room. Correct, no? As soon as you put a light, what will happen? The light, uh, you see, comes and the uh, darkness goes away from the room. The room is filled with uh, light. But uh, scientists say that uh, this each and every stars are actually sun, it seems. Every day, early in the morning, God just switch on the sun. This sun brings light to every, you see, corner, every nook and corner of this each and every places in the world. Imagine if we need to blow the whole earth with light, how much energy do we need? But God just switches on only one sun. In this universe, 
there are countless, countless substances. You see the video, what you are seeing there, the image, all these things are different, different sun of this universe. Before those great suns, our sun is just like a dot. Devdan. Even if there is so much of sun in the universe, why there is no light? Why there is no brightness? You see, you go and search, as soon as you cross over the earth atmosphere, there is only darkness, darkness, darkness in the space. Why? Because <clears throat> the quality of light is that if the light falls upon some item, it will reflect its light. You see, in the space, though there are so many sun, there is no end in the solar system that the sun light or this great sun's light may fall upon it and reflect back. That is the reason he says the space is infinite. This is mentioned in the Bible. You see, read <clears throat> Isaiah 43, 13 brother. Isaiah 43, 13 brother. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, before the day was I am. Ah, see, before the day was I am. Day means what? Huh? A time. A period. You see? Time and period means what? The distance between two things. That is time. That is distance. That is called a space. What does the Bible say? Even before space was ever created, there was a God. This is our almighty God. Just see the brain. So many trillions of uh, sun, so many trillions of stars. Yet, among all these things, God has chosen us. You know, God compares human beings to what in the Bible? He compares them to the drop of water. Isaiah 40, verse 15 and 17, brother. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. See? What is it called? Nations are as a drop of bucket. Nations means what? Imagine the great nation America, Russia, China, Japan. Huh? This huge, great nation in God's sight, how is it? It's a drop of water in a bucket. You see? Have you ever wondered? Do we ever worry about a drop of water in a bucket? Will we say, oh, you do, one drop of water is getting waste? Will we ever think? No. Oh. God gave importance to us. This is his love. Then he says, you see, we are counted as small dust of the balance. Huh? What do you mean by small dust of the balance? In a weighing scale, if there is dust, will we clean the dust and put uh, items in it? No, we won't care about any dust. It doesn't even add a gram of uh, weight uh, to the items. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, you see, hmm? huh? the nations are counted as dust. What is man, dear brother? Just think. Continue reading. Verse 17, brother. Huh? All nations before him are nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Huh? All nations before him are nothing. Nothing means uh, mathematical value. What, what can we give? In mathematics, 1 to 10 or 0 to 10. What is the value we can give for nothing? Zero. Zero. Very good. So, continue with the next. They are counted to him less than nothing. nothing. So, less than nothing means mathematic value. What is less than nothing? Less than nothing. <laughs> is there any mathematical value for less than zero? Yes, it is there. In the graph, you would have noticed if you go on the right side, the value increases plus, 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 0, 1, 2, 3. But on the left side, the value keeps on decreasing. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Correct, brother? 
Yeah. Uh, so less than zero means we are minus one. We are not even zero in sight of God. We are less than zero. It seems. Uh, imagine for less than zero, what did God give? His most precious. Uh, you see, uh, thing which he ever had with him, that is his son. He gave to this type of people. Dear yeah, brethren, can we imagine if a beggar, if he comes and pleads before us, saying, "Brother, I beg you, have mercy on me. Please, I want to have food for five days. Please give me whatever is possible from you. How much will we give him? Huh? Imagine if you open our purse. Huh? We have two choices. One, we have a hundred dollar note." Or we have a one dollar coin. Huh? How much will we pay for the beggar? How much will you give for the beggar? How much? How much will we give? We have got only two coins. So two currencies there. One is just a coin. Other is a hundred dollar note. So what will you give for the beggar? Hmm? Yes, only. Some, but we give less amount. Yes. What we'll search in our purse and see whichever is the least amount, huh? that one only we'll give. Or else we'll see which note is very less value and we'll give it to him. But God gave his best to us. David realized this one. And he said, when I see the heavens, the work of the hands, the moon, the stars, and the suns. God, what is man that you should consider him? What is man before you, God? You have created so many things. Man is utter waste. He commits a lot of sin. But even then, yet you love him. That was the response of David in Psalms 8, chapter, verse 3 and 4. You see, God says, all these things are he has created. You see, he has created all these things from his hand. And Moses said, even before all these things, there was a God. Read Psalms 90, verse 2. <clears throat> before the mountains were brought forth, even, but even though had it from the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, though art God. Even from everlasting to everlasting. You see, even before everything was formed, you are God, it seems. That is our God. You see, so is his greatness. Therefore, when, uh, you see, David, uh, uh, you see, and the prophets uh, mentioned about God, he said, he spoke so respectfully about the holiness of God. He said, read uh, Isaiah 57, 15, brother. Isaiah 57, 15. <clears throat> For those said the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, see? whose name is holy. Holy, see? What is it? Huh? For thus said the high and the lofty one. I and the lofty one means what? The one who lives very, very, you see? I, there's none other higher than God. That's what it means. The I and the lofty one, you see? I inhabited eternity. It means what? You see? Eternity means immortality. No end, no beginning. Who is there? You see? Who's, what is his name? His name is Holy. Then continue with that. His name is holy. I I dwell in the high and holy place, and with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to re revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the Contrite ones. Oh, where does it dwell it seems? Sir? Huh? Such a high God who has got all this uh, you see, power and all. Huh? The second place 
where he lives is in the heart of a sinner. What type of sinners? Who's got a contrite heart? Who's got a broken heart? Who is humble? Who is always ready to surrender to God? In these people, heart God dwells in him. Therefore, <clears throat> when Solomon prayed, he said in Second Chronicles two six that God, you are so magnificent that even the heavens, heavens of heavens, cannot you see contain thee. What is the temple that I built unto you? It is very small. There is nothing, God. And we all know when the Solomon built the temple, the glory of God covered the temple so much that none of the priests could enter the temple itself. So much of glory, you see, God had put upon Solomon temple. Do you begin imagine if God gave so much of importance just for a physical temple? How much more would He give for the temple within us? That is the holiness of our. God does. You see, so uh, he says, uh, uh, he comes and dwells in the heart of a contrite one. Uh, and uh, such a God he is the last, he is the first. There is no other God like this. Isaiah 44, 6, brother. Isaiah 44, 6. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his remainder, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. I am the first and the last. Huh? The God who has no beginning, the God who has no end, he is the first, he is the last. Okay? So Jesus is also called as Alpha and Omega, but that is, he is the beginning of God's creation, he is the end of God's direct creation. But such a God who doesn't have any beginning or end, there is none. And God says, he puts a question, is there anybody like that? Please let me know. Read verse 8 with her. For you not, neither be afraid, have not I told thee from that time and have declared it. Yeah, you are even my witness. Is there a God beside me? Yes, there is no God. I know not any. Uh, I know not not any. You are my witnesses, God said. Dear brethren, you see, <clears throat> therefore, you see, huh? there is none like our God. We can't compare our God to anybody. Therefore, in Romans 11, chapter, Apostle Paul says, huh? Oh, the depth of the richness, both of the wisdom, and knowledge of God. How unsearchable is his judgment? Huh? Imagine such a magnificent creator controlling such a magnificent, uh, you see, universe system without any hindrance, without any, you see, collusion, without any commotion in the universe. Very silently, each and every uh, things are moving in their own orbit. Imagine what type of mind God must be having. Huh? And who can advise such a God? You see? There. That's what Apostle Paul says. Read with Romans 11, chapter 33 to 36. Brother. Romans 11, chapter 33 to 36. Okay, brother. Mm -hmm. Oh, the depth, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, who unsearchable are his judgments and his way, ways past finding out for who that who has known the mind of the Lord or who had been his counselor mm. or who had first given to him and it is shall be recompensed unto him again for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. See? Behold uh, the mind of the Lord. How unsearchable is his wisdom. Uh, who has ever taught God of all these things? Uh? Who is God's teacher? You see, that's what Apostle Paul puts a question. You see, the very great question. That is the speciality of immortality. 
There is nothing. Nobody is required to teach God his self-existence. You see, he has got everything. Huh? And such a great God's first creation was our Lord Jesus Christ. Proverbs 8, chapter, verse 30 and 31. It says, Then I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight. Jesus was daily the delight of God is himself. Rejoicing always before God. Rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth. And Jesus' delight was with the sons of men. Therefore, when God you see, was ready to sacrifice his son, Jesus volunteered himself. Oh Lord, here I am. Please send me. I will go to do thy will. That was the relationship between Jesus and our God. You see, Jesus understood the pulse of God. God understood the pulse of Christ. Such was their intimacy. They were then, huh? you know, how and why God has created the, this universe. Huh? And in this universe, how many planets are there? Nine planets. Huh? And where is the earth placed? Earth is placed as the, you see, huh? the third uh, uh, planet uh, from the earth. Why exactly it, uh, it's the same place? It could have been placed with a, a place of Pluto very far from sun. No? Or else it could have placed at Mercury, uh, very near to sun. What would have happened? Uh? We would have either turned into ashes or else uh, we would have uh, turned into, uh, you see, ice. Uh, in, the, in Plato, in Pluto, sorry, in Pluto planet, uh, there is uh, uh, summer for, you know, six years. And next to six years, uh, there is winter, it seems. Uh. Imagine if you would have been in uh, Pluto, you would have died there only. Uh? But God has put Earth exactly in the same place where it exactly fits. There are seasons every three months. Yeah? Rainy season, winter season, summer season, uh, spring season. Uh, so beautifully God has placed uh, uh, why? for purpose of creating man. So man can man live on this earth. Let us read one verse. Isaiah 45, 18. Mother. Isaiah 45, 18. For thus said the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he had established it he created it all in vain. Ah, he, he created it not in vain. Everybody tells now, Jesus would come, he would destroy the earth. Immediately, everybody will go to heaven and hell. What will happen to this earth? Earth will be bombarded. Earth will be burnt in fire. What does the Bible say? He created the earth not in waste. Not to waste it. Not to destroy it. Ah, continue with that. Ah. Not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. Inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Good. He formed it so that man may live on this earth. You know, for man, what all God has made on this earth? Huh? Have you ever imagined what is the speed that the earth, you see, uh, uh, revolves? Have you ever known, brother? Do, do you know? Can you guess something, brother? What is the speed of this earth? Okay, what is the speed that it uh, it rotates on its own axis? There is twenty four hours now. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so for for twenty four hours one round it comes. Uh, so what is the speed? Can you ever uh, guess? Uh, what is the speed of this earth? Uh? So eighteen miles. Uh, eighteen uh, miles per second. It seems. How much? 18 miles, five. Yeah, brother, 18 miles, no leave, no problem. Convert it into hours and see how much it will come. 18 16. miles per second. Huh? 1600. Ah, that is per hour speed, it seems. Huh? More than a jet fighter. Huh? But do we ever feel any jerk on this earth? If we track no. such a speed on a road or a plane, we will definitely feel the jerk. But imagine there is no jerk at all. Smooth. 
everything is going on no oh, i have you ever thought why did god create it uh, uh, to travel at such a speed he could have placed permanently earth in some uh, a fixed place no why because it is because the earth travels at such a speed that gravitation actually forms on the earth atmosphere itself or else imagine if there is no gravitation what would be the condition of this earth this would have been a condition of this earth it would have been like as if you are living in space everything would have been you see huh? flying here and there and all it would have been very difficult for us to even eat and drink also but god made the gravity on this earth the existence of gravity why because of his travel at such a high speed it just sticks on to the earth you see that is the reason god created it and uh, moreover you see huh? we see that uh, there is a lot of ozone protection around the earth huh? lithosphere ionosphere atmosphere uh, ozone layer huh? have you ever wondered god why god has made all these things for man's protection imagine if those spheres were not there what would have happened now direct sun rays would have fallen on the man can i would have perished just because ionosphere is there in this ionosphere ions are traveling charges are traveling we are able to communicate to each other wirelessly you see my voice is reaching japan in how many seconds sir less than 2 seconds imagine the speed that the ions are traveling huh? even as i'm speaking mausam brother is uh, listening live how huh? which technology god ionosphere that is in the atmosphere even before man found it god had created it for man he created this earth not in vain yeah, we have wondered no when there is a heavy rain what comes sir thunder you see lightning we sometimes imagine ayo sir why didn't the rain come silently why there is thunder and lightning you know this is actually a speciality when the clouds come and meet together the charges ignite this lightning and thunder when this lightning and thunder comes it uh, mixes with water and nitrogen dioxide is produced this nitrogen dioxide is a natural fertilizer for all the plants and trees have you ever imagine huh? the trees which grow in wild are much you see long life than which we grow in our house why because it gets a natural fertilizer god has made it in such a way imagine the wonderful roots which god has created fibrous root tap root huh? see the brains of god why did he make two types of roots huh? imagine the quality of the roots of course deep inside the earth we can hardly dig huh? even if somebody gives us a rod iron rod we can't dig so deeply but the roots are so soft they make their space inside go inside the earth seek for water bible job says roots smell the water and go and seek the water seems what is the water do they get purified water filter water ha huh? or distilled or mineral water that water in the dirty water the water comes to the root is purified goes to the top of the trees for all the leaves it supplies sir. and what is produced the beautiful flowers tasty fruits huh? imagine the mango huh? how many times it comes in a year only once a year if it have come 12 months in a year there wouldn't have been so much of value for the mango huh? everybody likes uh, mango the king of fruits in that mango variety 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 the bible says hmm, god gives fruit for all the birds of the air it says no jesus says no huh? see the huh? birds of the air they neither sow nor reap yet god gives them the food are you not much worthy than those birds yes we are much worthy dear brethren god has created this earth <clears throat> not in vain he created it for man's living ha huh? have you ever seen this one ha huh? fireflies 
you come to my yeah. house i'll show you lot of fireflies are there in my house huh? you see ha huh? so ha huh? beautiful in the night i don't know from where it produces the electricity for us to produce so much of electricity we need generator we need wire connection ha huh? we need a dynamo and that has to be generator again a bulb should be there but imagine all these things god has put it in his insect huh? i don't know where it gets this power energy still there is no current even if you test that insect nothing will happen to you but that uh, light is there brother just to see the brother so why did god create uh, such a insect was it necessary god wanted man to enjoy this sight in the night beautiful you see insects huh eh? living everywhere every place it gives present to his eyes ha eh? and uh, you see kangaroo ha eh? in australia it doesn't live all over the world only in australia you know kangaroo is the only animal that carries uh, its child in a pouch you know what is the specialty of the pouch it is water ha eh? uh, what do you say water proof pouch it can swim inside the water for hours together not even a drop of water will enter the pouch it seems huh how is it sealed did uh, god put a zip yeah did god put any glue huh no no glue no sticker nothing but once the child grows inside the pouch automatically it gets sealed it seems huh not even a drop of water will go it seems just imagine the wonderful creation of god here yeah, then huh for what purpose god has created all these things it is to character to show his love towards mankind huh? have you ever seen a small worm an ant it will be the size of a, a small dot in a bookworm have you seen in the old books if you say if you open a small bookworm will there for that bookworm legs are there it seems eight legs first of all the worm is not even a dot for that one eight legs are there inside that worm brains are there senses are there nervous system is there blood is there heart lungs everything is there ha huh? if he touch the insect it will feel oh somebody is touching him a danger immediately it run away who has given this one dear brain such a small sensitive being and got life in it this life is given by the life source bible says no every good gift uh, comes from the father of lights uh. imagine the wonderful creation of man himself ha uh. uh, what all things are there in our uh, body you know? heart uh, lungs uh, kidney ha uh. every day we work uh, we study we go to all the places and by night uh, we take rest correct now uh. if you have not feeling well doctor says oh sir please take rest for at least minimum 8 hours a day if you sleep very well automatically will regain that energy see god has made a beautiful metabolism a beautiful hospital inside our body even though we don't take any medicines it will build antibody inside our body and revive our body if we take rest ha huh? imagine ha huh? how about our heart ha huh? does our heart take rest hmm? does your heart take rest brother mausam brother have you given leave to your heart no 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 please give one minute now <laughs> one minute rest please give now huh? <laughs> give one minute and then we will rest permanently huh? permanently yeah see the heart is keeping pumping lump tap lump dab yo yo pa without your rest if we if we touch we will feel bad ayyo oh, so much of pain but uh, but god has ever made us to realize that pain continuous work no lungs are keeping on functioning every day every you see and brains nervous system never gets tired this is the beautiful creation of god this david said no david appreciates this one see see psalms 139 16 and 17 brother ha huh? thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect and in the in the books all my members were written which in 
continuous were fascinated when as yet there was none of them how precious also are the the thought unto me oh god how great is the sum some of them what does he say in thy book all my members were written my eyes were written my small small little bit hands fingers were written my small eyes were written you see god had written everything in his book in his mind he had fashioned it when na when there was nothing in the mother's womb conception takes place nothing is there you see just a small zygote it conceives nothing is there but in that one eyes is there in that one brain is there you see dear brother david says how great is thy thought towards us lord david saw the universe appreciated god he saw the animals he appreciated god he saw himself so wonderful creation he appreciated god this is how we understand god you know god is so special that uh, if i tell you to carry a glass how will you carry if i tell you to carry most of brother carry a sharp glass how will you carry you will you will take the glass neatly pack it in a paper so nothing may happen and keep it in a very delicate uh, you see a very uh, most uh, safe place and carry it you know god has placed a very sharp and very thin minute glass you know where is it placed it in our eyes huh eh? that too how many times we move our eyes huh eh? from from morning till evening this camera keeps on working 1000 1000 megapixel camera you can zoom in zoom out left to right everything da 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 immediately it will function huh eh? eh? see the wonderful creation they were in sharp glass inside our eyes sensitive part of the body huh eh? this is our god therefore such a god never sleeps nor slumbers why he is created man for this purpose that he can live on this earth such a god create a hell and torture man no read psalms 121 for behold he that keep israel shall neither slumber nor sleep uh, neither slumber nor sleep other gods they sleep in the night morning we should wake up uh, oh god please come up come up please please then we need to give bath <laughs> to them uh, put clothes but our god no sleeping neither even slumber for such like you won't even do that right always alert and awake for what ready always to hear our faintest call even if in our heart if we cry oh lord please help me what would he do immediately will help jonah did the same thing he prayed to the lord in the belly of the fish he did not open his mouth he could not open his mouth he was inside the belly full dirt covered him even in the bible you see get in his heart he prayed god forgive me help me god heard his prayer immediately that uh, you see package was delivered on the sea shore door delivery you see that is the greatness of our god therefore in isaiah 40 28 what does he say read with isaiah 40 28 hmm. has that not known has that not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the in of the earth fain not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding there is no searching of his understanding the creator of the ends of the earth he never faints he is never tired even in job you see when he questioned god about uh, so many trials in his life you know god showed him this one only come i'll take you to the mountains come i'll take you to the you see zoo come i'll show you all the animals come i'll show you the solar system come i'll take you to the universe come i'll show you in the depths of the waters what types of animals are living 
can you teach all these things? Can you do all these things? God keeps on puts a questions to Job. Job seeing all these creations of God, he shuts his mouth and he says, Lord, I did a mistake by opening my mouth. I had heard about you, but now I have seen you, he says. Read Job 26, 14, brother. Job 26, 14. Lo, these are part of his ways, but how little a portion is heard of him, but the thunder of his power, who can understand? Huh? But how little a portion is heard of him? How many people speak about our God? Huh? Not many, not even anybody speaks about our God. Such is our God. Knowing everything that his name is defiled every day, see, he's silent because his God is wonderful plan. Each and every man can realize this in the thousand years when everybody will be resurrected. This God has got four important characters. Revelation 4, chapter, verse 6 and 7, brother. Revelation 4, 6 and 7. Ah, Got it, brother? Yes, I got it. Uh, also in front of the throne, there was that looked like a sea of glasses, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was lying like a flying eagle. Good. There were four living creatures at the center of the throne, around the throne. At the center of the throne, it is none other than God. Only God can sit on the throne. So on the throne and around the throne, how can these four creatures be? That means this represents the four characters of God. Hence, it is on the throne, around the throne also. You see, first of all, lion. Next, calf. Third is the face of a man. And the last is a flying eagle. This represents the four important characters of God. You see, lion. Uh, we call lion as a king of the jungle. Correct, no? Uh, that means power. Powerful. God is all powerful. You see, so much we studied about his power today. You see, but not God only is not only powerful, is God justice. That is represented in the calf. In olden days, in the tabernacle, they used to sacrifice this ox to uh, satisfy God's justice. Hence, ox in the Bible means God's justice. You say God is just. How? When Adam sinned, uh, what did God say? Huh? Don't eat the fruit, you will die. When he ate the fruit, what did God give him the punishment? You will die. You From the dust you are created, dust you will return. That is justice. Not that I will punish you, you will die, then you will go to hell. You will be tormented forever in hell. No, 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 no. That is not God's justice. Justice means equal. It should be clean, neat, equal. That is justice. He never violated his justice. Just because Adam sinned only the first time, he did not forgive him. Why? If he would have forgiven Adam then and there itself, there wouldn't have been any value for God's justice. Satan would have been true. God would have been liar. Therefore, he satisfied his justice. But third one, very important, and God is love. Yeah, That is shown in the face of a man. Why face of a man? Because compared to all the creations of God, man has got more love. You see, compared to all other creations, man has got more love. Today, of course, we can't see that one. But yet, uh, man has got so much of love in him, created in the image of God. So God is love. Similarly, Man is love. How did God show his love? Huh? By giving his son, 
redeeming everybody. And last is a flying eagle. Why a flying eagle? Eagle has got a very sharp eyesight. It's going in job. From far he sees his prey, comes and takes it. Eyesight. Eyes means what? Eyes of understanding, wisdom, knowledge. So God is very knowledgeable, very intelligent. You see? So see, each and everything is created. Everything is created very smartly. Therefore, these are four attributes of a garden. So, Lord bless these words. Any doubts, any questions, you can ask.